And now we have some new results from the asteroid Ryugu. The unusual asteroid that was visited by a Japanese probe from which she was able to collect a sample back in 2019. The probe known as Hayabusa 2 that was able to conduct this incredible mission a couple of years before NASA's attempt with the asteroid Bennu. And though we're going to be discussing the results from the asteroid Bennu in the next video, today let's actually talk about what was discovered about this asteroid in the last few years and why some of these discoveries are actually kind of exciting. And there are quite a lot of discoveries because researchers now had approximately 4 years to analyze a lot of these samples in a lot of detail. But first, why this asteroid and why is this asteroid so exciting? Well, if you just look at it, it's actually really typical. This is a C-type asteroid with plenty of similar asteroids in the main asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. And even its surface features are extremely similar to most of the asteroids we know today. But the main difference here is that this is not in the asteroid belt and it actually orbits much much closer to the Sun with the orbit not so different from planet Earth. You can see it here in green. And because this is also what's known as the near-Earth asteroid with a potential chance for a collision with Earth at some point, this particular object was obviously interesting for a lot of different reasons. Here's actually a really cool picture of the surface of this asteroid and this was snapped right from the surface of the asteroid by this mission. And as you can see here, it's very porous and it's actually not a rock. Instead, it's a collection of basically dust and various particles, all sort of collected into one single large snowball, very likely held together by both gravity and potentially electrostatic forces. But as soon as the samples from this asteroid returned to us, this is where the first mysteries started to be uncovered. First of all, there was a lot of organic matter in here as well. And that's actually something we usually find in things like comets, not asteroids. And the analysis of different isotopes, especially oxygen, suggested that a lot of material here was actually from the outskirts of the solar system and not from the asteroid belt. Now, one of the recent studies potentially provides one explanation to this. We'll discuss this in a few minutes. But in general, these discoveries suggested that the Ryugu very likely started as part of a much larger body somewhere on the outskirts of the solar system billions of years ago. And that body could have been up to 100 kilometers in diameter, but was very likely destroyed through a collision, resulting in a lot of leftovers, some of which then coalesced into their own asteroids. And in this case, further analysis established that there are a lot of similarities between Ryugu and some of the more distant objects such as the asteroid Hector, which orbits somewhere close to Jupiter. A lot of these objects contain a lot of organics and very often become comets when they come closer to the Sun due to some kind of a gravitational interaction which then changes their orbit. And so something like this must have happened to Ryugu, eventually putting it in the orbit we see right here. And it might have been even a comet for some time. But because everything from its surface very likely evaporated, it now only has some leftovers, at least on the surface, and possibly a lot more hiding inside. And because in this case, Samples from inside were also retrieved, here we do observe signs of its cometary origin. But even more intriguing, the samples here seem to suggest that it's basically a kind of a mishmash of a lot of material from everywhere in the solar system. For example, it contains grains that very likely formed in very high temperatures above 1000 degrees Celsius. Which means that it might have started as a small rock at first, and was then transported to the outskirts where the larger body was formed later. On top of this, prior to the destruction of the larger body, it might have also contained signs of water somewhere inside. And that's because not only were there signs of liquid water in some of the samples, here there was even a tiny tiny drop of actual liquid, specifically water and CO2, or basically carbonated water, discovered in one of the samples. Not to mention there were also unusual crystals that were very likely shaped in the presence of liquid water as well. And if that wasn't weird, on top of this, there was also a discovery of uracil, one of the four components of RNA, discovered in there as well, as well as things like vitamin B3 and many many other complex organic molecules. And once again, based on the orbit of this asteroid, this provided important evidence for the origin of all of these things on planet Earth. And so, organic compounds, everything that life is made out of, and very likely liquid water, might have been delivered to Earth through objects like Ryugu over billions and billions of years. But on top of this, a recent study also solved another important mystery. A mystery that nobody could solve for a very long time, and we've discussed this in one of the videos in the description. If you look at the atmosphere of planet Earth, and if you look at a lot of different things life depends on, there is one that's still unexplained. 
nitrogen, the main compound in the Earth's atmosphere and one of the main compounds in pretty much all life. But to this date, it was not clear where exactly nitrogen came from. Intriguingly, the only other object that contains a lot of nitrogen and very thick atmosphere like planet Earth is Saturn's Titan. And the origin here is also unclear. But Ryugu once again provided a few hints. We know that normally, a lot of nitrogen compounds such as ammonia salts are quite abundant on the outskirts of the solar system. But how exactly they came to Earth was not clear. Yet here, on the surface of some of the samples, the researchers found iron nitride, essentially iron mixed with nitrogen that formed a very unusual layer on a lot of different surfaces. And so here the explanation is that it's quite likely that a lot of micrometeorites or tiny tiny pieces of cometary and asteroid matter, most likely containing ammonia, deposited on the surface of Ryugu over billions of years. And through various chemical interactions, including other micrometeorite collisions, they essentially created these unusual layers visible right here. And this by itself is a huge discovery, mostly because it once again highlights a very interesting delivery system to planet Earth. I mean, the system kind of looks like this. But it's the chemical reactions on top of these asteroids and a lot of chemical interactions they go through for billions of years that essentially brings all of these complex molecules to planet Earth. With additional studies discovering how water created additional chemical reactions and a lot of isotopic interaction that then influenced chemistry inside the asteroid even more. But those initial chemical reactions were then influenced by additional reactions for billions of years as Ryugu traveled across the solar system, interacting with different parts of the solar system as its orbit changed. So at first, on the outskirts, it probably acquired a lot of carbonaceous matter and a lot of volatile compounds, including ammonia, which of course contains nitrogen. But as it made its way closer and closer to the sun, the elemental composition started to change. A lot of volatiles very likely escaped through cometary activity, but it also started to receive additional matter from a lot of micrometeorites and even cometary tails. And this is really exciting because now we seem to have evidence for the interaction with various cometary pieces on the surface. For example, here the researchers discovered what's known as the melt splash, or essentially tiny craters from micrometeoroids, usually micrometers in size, that in this case contained carbonaceous material very similar to cometary dust, which could only have come from cometary dust striking the surface. And so here a lot of the discoveries suggest very complex chemical interaction between cometary particles and silicate materials inside the asteroid. Intriguingly, this is not so different from what, technically, you and I are made out of as well. This is basically primordial organic matter, or I guess in some sense maybe seeds of life. And so quite a lot of these micro craters have been discovered in a lot of these samples, implying that this is a very common occurrence and most likely serves as a kind of an enrichment system for a lot of asteroids which sometimes end up on planet Earth. But it wasn't exactly the same as the cometary stuff. It actually lacked oxygen and nitrogen, which very likely resulted from the evaporation, mostly because these collisions still actually produced quite a lot of energy. But to some extent what this implies is that Ryugu, and by extension a lot of other very similar asteroids, is basically a delivery box. It travels across the solar system collecting a lot of matter from everywhere that then chemically interacts on the surface, especially because of these micro collisions, which provide enough energy for simple chemical reactions. And then, once in a while, this delivery box brings all of this to one of the planets in the solar system. But then, the researchers found something else. Actually, two of something else. They found two tiny grains that looked different from everything else. And these were extremely rich in iron and sulfur, but did not contain a lot of silicates or oxygen, and so they kind of stood out from everything else. Here is what they kind of looked like, in some of the samples. And the only explanation here is that these are pre-solar grains, or basically tiny tiny pieces that very likely came from either outside of the solar system or were created before the sun became the sun. And they were inside Ryugu as well. And that is really cool. It means that Ryugu is not just some kind of a rock that was created all at once, it's literally a bunch of dust particles that were formed at different periods of the solar system all the way from the beginning and even before the solar system up until more recent times. Or I guess in some way you can kind of imagine this as a big snowball. After the formation of the solar system, it sort of moved around, collecting more and more stuff, becoming more complex and eventually ended up close to planet Earth. And that's a pretty big discovery for how we see the evolution of the solar system and of course the evolution of planetary surfaces and their atmospheres. 
It basically means that everything that we kind of take for granted on the surface of the planet most likely came from a lot of complex interactions outside of the planet. And many of these interactions possibly even served as the foundation of life. There are actually quite a lot of propositions that maybe a lot of organic molecules and a lot of different pieces of things like RNA and DNA possibly came prepackaged to planet Earth before the evolution of life started. But once again, Ryugu itself started as a piece of something else. A piece of a larger rock that could have become another planet, but it didn't because something destroyed it. And so yeah, in these four years we've learned a lot of complicated stuff about asteroids and about the solar system. But the thing is, this is just a start. There are still more samples to be investigated, and most importantly, the samples from Bano have now been opened as well, and we're going to start hearing the results from that mission really soon as well. And so until these future discoveries, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. Check out similar videos in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.